The Mayo Football Podcast Studio Special. Uh, we have some very special guests with us. Uh, John's here as well at Mayo Podcast Headquarters for a 1983 All Ireland Under 21. Uh, champions special uh, we we had intended to squeeze this into the previous calendar year so we could have said 40 years on but I still can say 40 years on plus a little bit of change how are you I'm good I'm good Rob as you know um, the genesis of this I think was the day that we played Donegal last year in the league up in Bally Buffet and um, I stayed the night before in Enniskillen because there was no room as at the inn in, in, in Bally Buffet. Mm. And I was just looking at the map the following morning before I was heading out and I saw that Irvinstown was only seven or eight miles out the road. And I said, Jesus, that's a place that I've never stood in since, uh, since I was there in that famous day in 83. And I had plenty of time that, that morning. So I got into the car and I drove to Irvinstown and there isn't a whole lot in Irvinstown. <laughs> but what is there is St. Malicious Park. Um, and it was lovely just to to it, just to look through the gate, and and to look up on the grassy bank where we stood that day when Mayo won that famous All Ireland in nineteen eighty three. The only All Ireland played in the six counties until the minor final later that year. So even then, it was the only All Ireland that had ever been played in, in the north, and a hugely famous day. And I remember I, I I I spent some time on Twitter afterwards just going through, recounting the story and photographs and all the rest. And it got a huge reaction. We thought, we have to commemorate it. It's 40 years on. Um, we didn't quite make it in, in, in uh, 2023, but better late than ever. We, in the essence of what we do here, John, is we try to form good conversations because uh, uh, we think that's what brings people a bit closer to home if you're far away or if you're just living around here and traveling to work and you want to escape a little bit. That's what we try to do. But at the same time, I've been told in some of these reminiscing shows, and as you know, I've done a few in other sports, uh, sometimes you need to layer on a little bit of detail. So uh, Mayo, Connick champions, a huge win over Kerry in an All-Ireland semi-final, a drawn game against Derry, a last minute goal, a sucker punch, and yet they bounce back for an amazing win up in Irvingstown, as you've described. Read out that Mayo team that played in that final before I introduced two of them here uh, to our listeners. Yeah, and it's it's an easier team to read out, I think, because we don't have uh, the the uh, the obligatory six subs that we have nowadays. <laughs> so, uh, <laughs> right, okay, here goes. Yeah, uh, in goal was Gabriel Irwin from, from Lenamoy, uh, cornerback Peter Ford from this town of Ballinrobe. Uh, John Mahon was fullback and Eddie Gibbons of the Neil uh, was in the other corner and of course he was captain. Uh, James McNabb from Clermaris was right half back. Uh, McFeeney from Castlebar was centre back and John Finn of Mayo Gales was uh, the other wing. Ger Garrity from uh, Ballantubber uh, was in midfield along with Sean Maher from Clermaris. Uh, wing forward was Park Brogan from Knockmore. Centre forward Joe Lindsay from Kiltain and Noel Durkin was the other wing forward from Balladrine. Uh, in the corner in the forwards, uh, Brian Kilkelly from Casper um, Mitchells, Tommy Grogan, full forward from Ballyhonis, and Park Duffy from Ahamore in the other corner. Kevin McStay came on as a sub at halftime for Joe Lindsay. And as far as I know, he was the only sub that came on that day. So, uh, I'll... Mm-hmm. oh yeah, Martin Cairns Karen, came on as well. Yeah, and Martin Cairns was, had, had, I think, was actually played in the, in, in the drawing game. So, yeah. So that was, that was the team that won the under 21 in 1983, which was our third success at that level. And as Sean Rice brilliantly said in his match report, the third final Mayo won after a replay, which is uh, mm. quite quite an achievement. On our show, uh, to look back at this game, uh, they didn't want me mentioning how many years on, I know that, so we, we, won't, mention, we won't mention that number again. Uh, Eddie Gibbons, the captain, and John Finn, uh, the Mayo Gales and former Mayo senior as well. Lads, you're very welcome, Eddie. Welcome along. Thanks very much, Rob. And nice to be here. Well, it was great to have you in our headquarters. So you're only, uh, only out the road from me. John, you had a little bit further to fa- uh, travel. You're in Kilchamaw these days, but your Mayo Gales isn't far away from here either. How are you? 
I could I could drive right through the Mio Abbey Parish to get here. <laughs> you could absolutely yeah. could. A little bit of a detour, but why not? Uh, why not? Uh, Mike used to send me out there for every every uh, championship game. He, he ended up calling me uh, Mayo Gales correspondent for a while there. So I know the club inside out. Yes, <laughs> I always get a good welcome. Yes, uh, lads, what does it mean to think back? You, like we, ha- I have a booklet here in front of me, Eddie, that you you sent on to me beforehand that you you, you made uh, in two thousand and three. Now to com- commemorate the the twentieth anniversary, and you had an amazing night. Um, as the years go on, uh, is the connection, the bond, uh, the meaning as strong as ever for the group? Yeah, it's like the whole squad were spread here, far and wide. Um, Every now and again, occasionally, I bump into some of them. John, I've bumped into a few times at matches and that. And Jerry, that played with some midfield, Jerry Garrity. Uh, I've met him once or twice in Chicago when he's home here in Ballantubber. <clears throat> but, um, yeah, there's always little things that will bring you back to the, the famous day. And even to, even t- to this year and up to now, um, sometimes I'll be on the street and... <laughs> I know it's 40 years ago, but believe it or not, some people still recognise me. <laughs> and they'll come up and they'll say to me, I was there that famous day in Irvinstown, you know. And um, yeah, it, it really boosts you. And it's, you know, often if I'm somewhere where, be it at a function or whatever, and I just look around the room and I say to myself, how many men and women in this room have been lucky enough to win an all Ireland medal? Mm. And, you know, it's times like that when it brings it home, the enormity of it at the time for us and the great achievement it was, you know. Yeah, mm. it meant so much to people. John, you do realise you're responsible, responsible for bringing more Mayo people to the north of Ireland for the very first time <laughs> in their lives. <laughs> they crossed that point. Yeah. How many Mayo people who have been at game tells me, yeah. it was the first time I ever, yeah. I ever went to Northern Ireland. <laughs> well, John was saying there that it was his first time back in uh, uh, earlier on, or later on last year. I don't think I've ever been back there <laughs> since myself, and I've played quite a few games afterwards, but I don't think we played in Irvinstown uh, after that, you know. Hmm. But look at, I suppose, uh, there were fantastic times uh, for us. Uh, we're very privileged um, to be able to play with Mio, um, and it was a great honour for any of us to even put it down the jersey, never mind uh, being able to play uh, and win an All-Ireland final. It was, um, you know, for us it was serious. Uh, stuff like you go back them days and you you look back at the times that were in it um i know my our number at home in our own house was bell 60 right and um i think <laughs> which it, can't I, have gone down well for mayo gales man to have yeah. bell on his phone number but let's, yeah. let's forget about that bit. Funny. <laughs> well, bell, bell, bell was the exchange Right, so, and I think I think we ended up we we in around that time we got the dial phone. Right, and this was really something mm. modern. That was, that was posh, John. That was really <laughs> posh at the time, like, you know. So there was no Twitter, and there was there was no texting, there was no nothing. So there was there was far less distractions that young uh, kids uh, um, have nowadays. Um, and look at f- football was one of the things that we really um, enjoyed, and and really it was r- really one of the toys that we only had when we were coming up in our years, you know. So that definitely helped us um, 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 through the, the particular times. But it'll just give an idea of the, to the younger listeners that might be listening here, that there were totally different times, but there were still, there were great times. And there yeah. were tough times, but there were great times as well. It's it, it's funny, actually, um, <clears throat> during the whole torture Brexit process, I... I Funnily enough, that reminded me of the 83 campaign because they're on about, you know, the open border between North and South. Because, I mean, we got the bus off from Clare Morris to, to Irvinstown yes. and we stopped in Black Line. And, and we may have had some lubrication in Black Line, um, but then we went through Belcoo and, and, and out into the North and, uh, and we stopped by the UDR. Like, and this guy mm. comes on with this, this absolutely enormous rifle, you know, and there wasn't a sound on the bus, you know, and mm. poking under the seats and all the rest. So a very, very different time. But the funny thing was, we were stopped again after the final, you know, and I think it was the customs that come on this time and they said like, Anthony to declare, you know, and he said, only the cup. <laughs> <laughs> well, well, later on, actually, uh, later on in, in latter years, we, we travelled over the border a few, a few times. So we were going up to Aramea at one stage and the, most of the team arrived, arrived um, at the, at, in the park and, but there was one car that, was stopped and was pulled in and they, and three players missed the game 
Right. Over it. Yeah. So it's, you know, so there were definitely different times, like, and, yeah. you know. Yeah, so well, thankfully it's all gone, you know. Ah, uh, yeah. And, and, and it's something, actually, it's a nice thing, Eddie, to have on your record that, like, in, in a sport that's all about cross community, all about yeah. a 32 county uh, perspective, that you, you broke, you made history. And it was mentioned in, in most, if not every report, that this is the first All Ireland in the North. And it's yeah. astonishing, actually, that it's only, it was only last year that, that right. another final happened. And that's just yeah. because there happened to be two Ulster yeah. final, two Ulster teams and the Athletic Grounds in Armagh. Is a great ground, and it was a great ground to play yeah. it in. But mm. d- but it really was breaking ground. Like it was, it was, it was. Yeah, it. Uh, mm. I caught out many is the great so called GA aficionado with that question, <laughs> including including the great uh, Mick O'Dwyer or Mihal um, oh, yeah. But uh, another testament to the Mayo supporters as well. I mean, there must have been two or three thousand Mayo supporters at that match that day. Mm. They outnumbered Derry two to three, mm. and the dangers at the time and what was going on with the troubles and that. And like I remember, supporters afterwards, <clears throat> some of them missed the first half. Some supporters came up to me after the game, where they were held over on the side of the road and really? delayed yeah. and missed some of the game and that. Mm. But it still didn't deter that great mayor following that helped us on the day and cheered us on you know mm. yeah the picture is in in the uh, commemorative program there's one picture of all uh, I think pretty much everyone who's there John's been trying to pick his head out there for a while you <laughs> haven't succeeded yet you'll find it John you'll find it you have to look for the hair you have to look for the hair you printed the training um, schedule for the lead up to the semi final in in that commemorative book, and it's I love it. Like Tuesday, September six, training and video of Connick final, Claire Morris half seven. Thursday, the eighth of September, training. Uh, Sunday, the eleventh September, match versus Dunmore. Who, when I was going through the papers, I noticed that Dunmore were playing an uh, iconic semi final because they had won in Galway yeah. against mm. the Mary. So obviously, you were playing mm. the Dunmore seniors mm. and preparing uh, preparing for that. I was in Clare Morris and you were training. I love this one on Wednesday, the fourteenth September. You played the Mayo, Mayo senior team, and I think Jono said in in the uh, book here. He says we we organised a friendly against the Mayo senior team so we could see some of our senior players. <laughs> Which Pat or Gardner could take a note from that there. Eddie. <laughs> <laughs> like, sure. Absolutely, yeah. 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 We're actually, Brach might but, let him have a few players. But, but here's the interesting thing. I was just going back over the records. I was surprised by the number of players on the 83 team who played senior championship that mm. summer. Mm. You know, and there were a number of them. There was like, mm. Jerry Garrity obviously started. Yeah. Uh, I think uh, Peter Ford came on. So Brian Kilkelly played, Porrick Duffy played. You know, they, they, yeah. all, they all had substitute appearances, you know, yeah. which was surprising. And in some cases they, they had... All those appearances before your championship got going, because obviously that started much later. Yeah, the, um, there's no doubt about it. Um, like if you look at, at that team, especially that team, 26 in the panel, I think there's there's something like 21 clubs represented on that team, you know. Um, and um, there's no doubt if you look right through the game, I'd say nearly 20 of that team played senior football in some way or another after words you know so it was a huge we got a huge um take out of that particular team um to 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 future teams uh, future senior teams whether it was league or whether it was championship so um there's no doubt about it um and and that was the, that was the critical point as well because the critical point for a lot of teams is to getting them through from that minor right through to under 21 on to senior that's where you lose an awful lot of um, um of of kids especially nowadays because mm. there's a lot more things to be done in our in in, in uh, we lost the likes of Gerard Garrity and Porrick Duffy went to uh, which were huge losses uh, yeah. really um, and we lost other players as well down through the years naturally which but I suppose that happens in every county um, for, to us it probably affected us more because uh, the likes of Porrick Duffy and 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 yeah. Gerard Garrity uh, would have been very influential uh, in in our team at the particular time, so they, they was they definitely were missed, especially when they were done to play so well abroad as well, you know. So, but 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 you're right; it's such a huge crop, and it was funny. Yeah. I was just talking to Colin Boyle there up in the dome. <clears throat> uh, we were I was telling him we were going to do this pod, and we were comparing the the teams of '83 and 2006 mm. because that's the only other team I think that that had had a similar crop that came through. I mean, the group that came through from 06 was f- absolutely phenomenal. Absolutely, but yeah. but it was kind of similar, I think, between the two groups in terms of the numbers of players that, that came through to senior and played for a long time at senior then. Yeah, I think a lot of the credit, uh, and we spoke about this earlier, a lot of the credit, I think, in then days, naturally, 
people came through the club scene. But if you look at a lot of the uh, um, the vocational and the college scene at that time was very strong as well. We had players in that team that went to Jarlitz, Carmelite Moat, the boarding schools. Then you had Coleman's doing very well. And a lot of the vocational schools were ex- extremely strong as well. And I think they won in All-Ireland at that okay, stage, yeah. you know. So uh, that was our development pro our development squad really the colleges I felt I, I felt that if I hadn't that college structure at that particular time it wouldn't have brought me to the same or to the next level that I needed to 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 play with um um in a senior uh, or, or yeah. an under 20 or a county team you know so I I thought that was crucial and and I still think that area is crucial for development um um you know the college and the schools mm. set up is Absolutely vital going forward, you know. Jono, Jono got the <clears throat> gig off Liam O'Neill's uh, sort of mount. So obviously, as Jono said himself, wasn't as much boardroom politics in those days. I mean, he didn't have to go through three year terms or any of that stuff. Liam needed a guy that he could trust and obviously spotted something in Jono. 29 years of age at that stage, an All-Ireland winner himself at under 21 level. Um, I'm curious, A, you know, that process and B, at what point, Eddie, did he come to you and say, I want you to be my captain? Can you remember that? Um, <clears throat> I know, first of all, the first night we had training when Jono came in, I remember looking at us and saying, who is this guy? Yeah. <laughs> uh, we had we had Liam, I, I, I had played the year before in 82 and Liam was manager, Liam and he was manager and we were very unlucky. We we, we lost to Roscommon in replay in the Connick semi-final. Ross Common went on to the All Ireland final in eighty two and ran Donegal very close, but Donegal won it. So then uh, Jono came in and from early on I can't remember exactly when mm. both he and Lord Rest Christy, Christy O'Hare, mm. yeah. um they approached me and they said, How would I feel about taking on the ca- captaincy and Look, it was like a dream come true. I was honoured and, um, you know, I told them that I'd do the best I could and I hoped that they'd be proud of me as captain. And But <clears throat> to be honest with you, with the bunch of guys that was there and John touched on it earlier on, a lot of them coming from college background, like myself, I come from Gerlitz, uh, a great training ethos there already. And uh, I knew the guys, you know, we were all going to give it give it a, a big effort. So... Um, and then uh, early on, that sheet program that you see published there, there was a lot more sheets than that earlier on in yeah. the season. Yeah. Mm. And uh, you could see straight away coming through from Jono was the organisation, the discipline, everything. And um, with that and the selectors that he had behind him and then with the squad that was there and... Uh, yeah, it just, it had blend, blended perfectly, you know. Obviously, in, in those days, it was all just straight knockout um, and you can never be sure about anything. Um, when did you think you had, a, you had a chance of really doing something special with this team? Because I, I was, we were saying off air beforehand, where the first match that I saw you play that year was, was not the first one against Leitrim, it was the second one against, mm-hmm. against Sligo, the one the evening in Turbo Curry. And my brother Louis said, come on, we, we have to go down and see this Mayo and Trini one team. said, it's a bloody good team. Like oh. the, this team can go a long way. Um, so, so that that was a kind of a fan's yeah. view at the time. When did you feel mm, we might well, be onto something here? Personally, I thought we were really onto something. I don't know how John feels about this, but we played a challenge against Kerry, mm. and uh, we really rattled them. Oh, um, when was when was that, Eddie? That well, I was trying to think earlier on when we actually played it because. We played Kerry in the All Ireland semi final. Mm. I was thinking first that we maybe played that challenge match after we had won Connacht, but I would doubt it because we were playing the Munster champions in the All Ireland semi final. So it was probably earlier on the season, maybe before the Connacht final, or to, it, it was sometime during the Connacht champ, uh, championship. But um, like Kerry at that time had Ambrose, Ambrose O'Donovan mm. midfield, and Jerry that day, Jerry Garrity. He just gave him an exhibition so much so Ambrose just couldn't handle it. Actually, he got he got sent off. I think if memory serves me right, in in that challenge game. Mm. But um, yeah, no. We, <clears throat> after that performance against Kerry, to me personally, anyways, I mm. said, you know, we can really. 
there, we, there was always a good nucleus there, though, uh, mm. and and uh, you know they, uh, we, had, we you know we had real good strong characters and yeah. and, and good strength in the team, like you know, uh, right through the team, you know, and um, again, uh, you know, it's 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 from even playing, you know, we were we were always chopping at the bit, really yeah. at minor level as well. So we were we were like that particular team lost to Derry uh, two two years previous in the minor semi-final or maybe it was three years in a minor semi-final in Dublin and we um, we narrowly narrow lost to them and so we came back to beat them in the All-Ireland Final in, in 93 which was which was shown that we were shown progression as well in that in particular group of mm. uh, people and within the uh, football setup, you know. Mm. So it's... Um, yeah, I can't really pinpoint. Uh, I, I, being quite honest, for the first for the first two or three, I think, see our games, I was trying to secure my own position on the team. <laughs> so it took it took me a couple of because when John <coughs> Jono took over, uh, I had never trained with him or I, I didn't know of him really at the, at the particular time, and I didn't know much about him. So you you really had to impress a new setup, you mm-hmm. know. So you had to. Uh, whereby you might have been under different management at, at minor or whatever. So you had to impress again to make sure. So the competition was very, very strong in that panel. Yeah. Like, you know, so it took me a couple of games to, to, to get myself sorted as such and, and to, 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 to get a place. It was okay for Eddie. Eddie was, um, <laughs> Eddie was a good footballer. No, no. But, I, but I mean, the, with the squad that was there, you were yeah. always looking over your shoulder because I know on the backs, like we had Joe Gilmore and we yeah. had uh, <clears throat> Brendan O'Loughlin, mm. who's from Ballinrobe here. Mm. Yeah. Two class players, two class defenders. Joe also played in uh, colleges with Coleman's. Um, so they really kept you going and you were, you know, fighting yeah. the whole time to hold your place. Yeah, because Joe, Joe played in the Connacht final. That's right. Yeah. yeah, yeah. 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 And, and it was only really in the Connacht final that the team took on a kind of settled appearance, if you like. If you look mm. at the team mm. that played in the Connacht final, it's very similar to yeah. the team that yes. went on. Uh, thereafter and you're right John it was the second game you came on as a sub for McFeeney I have it in my notes <laughs> That's right. so it took you a while to get into in, into the team but Rob I think we, we our plan was we'd, we'd go through the campaign Dude. a little bit kind Dude. of game yeah. by game yes. just, just a little bit take the high yes. notes I said the first game was it was in Park Sean in, in, in Carrick and Shannon it's the only the only match of that campaign that I wasn't at um, but a certain K Max Day caught the eye that night because um, he scored 2-4 in that match and he was parachuted into the senior team mm. for the Connacht final, yeah. which was played, I think, about a week afterwards, a week or 10 days afterwards. So the that match finished Mayo 2-11, Leitrim 1-5. Is there anything that stands out from that? I mean, I, that's the obvious thing, I think, Kevin, because, I mean, every, I remember that became a national story that Kevin McStay was just straight in, first yeah. start at senior level. He hadn't played at all before. I mean, once he's, I mean, I, I remember in that Connacht final, he was jinking, he was, mm. he was such a live wire, you know, but but he must have been a real handle at that stage at under twenty one. Well, I think anyone, and I say Eddie 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 marked him more times oh. than I did. So, uh, you know, Kevin was he was very versatile. Naturally, he had two legs. He could dummy and go from either side, which in them days was was wasn't very. Um, not everyone had that them skills, you know. So he was very very hard to track down. There's right. no doubt. Even to get a hold of him at some stage, it was it was difficult. And Eddie, you know that from 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 playing. He, no doubt you marked him loads of times at, at that uh, period. Well, I tried, Eddie. I yeah. tried, um, but I would have. Kevin actually uh, playing with the Neil. I uh, lost an under fourteen county final and was against Banana, but it was Kevin McStay that bet us. He was just untouchable again in under sixteen county final. Kevin beat us again with Ballina. But I didn't saw him. He was in Gerlitz when I was in Gerlitz. <clears throat> and we'd just be watching those skills every day. And it was no surprise to me that even in Leitrim, when, when he turned it on and scored the 2-4. Um, so, yeah, no, he, he, he was a gifted player, definitely. Right, yeah. so, it's, so that was the first hurdle over. That, yeah. was on, that was on the 8th of July. What, what really strikes me about this campaign is how leisurely it was. Like, it, it's not this week. I don't know how you'd have managed week on week, lads, you know, because this was, you had a nice... <laughs> five, th- five Wednesday nights <laughs> now this year. <laughs> you, had a, you had a nice three weeks before, before the next one. So second match was was uh, Kilcoyne Park, Tubber Curry, 1st of August. 
Mayo 4-11, Sligo 0-3. And the big scores that, that evening were Tommy Grogan and Park Duffy with 2-1 apiece. Mm. So that was that was kind of an easy one. Mm-hmm. Uh, John, yeah, that was your that was your your bow. Mm. Um, and then on to the Connacht final. And, and that was the 28th of August. Uh, and that was a real eye-catching score. And this is a game that really sticks in my mind for, for so many reasons. Mayo 119, Ross Common 1-6. I don't think you were favourites going into that game, guys, because... Because Russ Common had been, as as we've mentioned, they were in the con- the, the All Ireland final mm, previous yeah. year. There was eight of that team mm. still there mm. in in eighty three, and they had beaten Galway by a point in in, in the semi final. But you absolutely battered them that mm. day. Mm. Yeah, and I suppose look at because maybe they had won the previous year or whatever else. We were in our game, mm. you know. It it is, um, but look at uh, going back to John O'Mahony and and the backroom team. John o was. Seriously organised, you know. Uh, he covered everything um, um, in detail, like you know. So he, um, there's no doubt, um, we planned pretty well for that, for that particular game. We played against a lot of these Roscommon guys too at, at underage, <coughs> so we knew them as well, and we knew probably that they were they were, were beaten as well, you know. So thankfully, it went well for us on the day. But once we got going. You know, it got to a stage then that you, you know, that we we knew we were going to win the game. Yeah, you know? and I, I, it it felt certainly watching it like like a big deal because in that era we were used to Ross Common beating us because I remember mm. being at the Connacht final in it was in nineteen eighty and in, in Hyde Park and they beat us out the gate, mm. you know. So and that was that really great Ross Common team that won four yeah. Connacht titles in a row. So so we we didn't feel like top dogs playing playing mm. the Rossies then. It's, it's a bit then. different to senior football because it's it's it can be unpredictable. I know they had eight uh, uh, players coming through, but yeah. we had quite a few f- uh, players coming through from the previous year as yeah. well. You know? So <clears throat> um like in our team we could match them, you know. Mm. Um uh, uh, like we, we we ran them like to uh, the year before they got to the All Ireland final we we drew against them in the Connacht semi final, and then we lost. It was literally the last minute of the game. We were leading, and uh, Paul Early scored a goal to to win the match, and they went on to win the Connacht and then the All Ireland final against Donegal, which which they were beaten. But uh, I think on that strength from the year before, we had no fear of them going in the following year. And mm. as time progressed, the following year, kind of those of us that were there from the year before, we realised that the squad we had for eighty three. We were we were a better squad than than the year before, and uh, yeah, yeah, and you, you you certainly proved it that day. Mm. the 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 other thing that sticks in my mind from that game, and I don't know if that would have been apparent from on the pitch, but that was the same day that Dublin played Cork in the replay down in Parky Cueve, and loads of people had transistor radios on. So you could hear the commentary <laughs> from Parky Cueve as well. well. So you're watching one match and you're mm. you're 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 hearing another match. I don't know if that was apparent on the pitch. Probably not. No. But oh, yeah. uh, but it's kind of one yeah. odd yeah. thing that sticks yeah, in the yeah. mind from the yeah. moment. Yeah, yeah. Oh, yeah. Nowadays they have the phones out. I remember Johnny Sexton kicking that drop goal, and I was at a league game uh, trying to watch it with about five hundred <laughs> people around me. But that's a that's a bit of a different time. I, I, I'm like I'm curious about the, the generational thing because. Eddie, like and just as an insert into into our, our timeline here, you know, what we're constantly trying to do in Mayo, and you've heard it from James Horan on, is this team is different. This generation is different. They don't have any of the bother of the past. They don't have the any troubles. But the one time that is true in Mayo football is in underage football, you know, the, mm. cause, because it, there are a group of players who are so linked generationally obviously, logically, with a two-year age ban, that it does take, it takes some of the shackles off, doesn't it? You don't think about the reputation of the county or any of that crack. No, um, no, and I mean, <clears throat> the 70s and going into the 80s as well, I mean, Mayo underage teams were always up there kind of featuring mm. in finals and that, and, um, and like as John had said earlier on there, there was a great base to leading up to that with with the colleges, with mm. Coleman's, with Charlotte's, um, and that, and um, and the vocation schools was very strong in the county at the time. Those years, they were reaching all Ireland finals and and that and and winning some of them. So, um, 
yeah, there, there was no fear. There mm. was no fear in, in any of the guys when they, when they got on that stage, you yeah. know. Yeah. Which leads us to Kerry, John, in the North Ireland semi-final. Where these lads are already beating them in the challenge game. But you're probably going down there going, this Kerry, we have no chance, were yeah, you? That's right. Now, right. Be honest here, John. Okay, now, now, you're, now you're in the... You're in the big time now, guys. Right. You know. Um, no, no, I, I, I'm, I, I was telling everybody at this stage this team's going to win the All Ireland. You know, that, was, that sounds like the John I know now. So, like, I actually believe in that. So, so there was a, there was a mate of mine um, came down from Dublin, and and we drew, we we drove we came to our place first, and then we drove down to Ennis. But we we miscalculated um, how long the journey would take. So by the time we got into Cusick Park, uh, Mayo were two goals to the good. Mm. Uh, because they scored, you scored two goals in the first in the first six minutes, and didn't score again for a very long time, as I recall, because um, Pori Brogan then was sent off in the meantime. So the other side of my character, Rob, was coming out at that stage, oh, you yeah. know, and the sort of <laughs> uh, done. E- 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 expressing mild displeasure at the referee, you know, that, <laughs> well, kind, of, enough, that, that yeah. kind of stuff. Be like so, it. but but I think in terms of of the characteristics of the team, I think what we saw that day was you know, triumph over adversity because you were in, you were in a hole that day. Like you were right. in a serious bother that day, but you, but, but you dug it out. What, what's your memories of that one? Um, my memories, I, I can, was that the game that Parik went up for a ball and he came down on top of Noel Durkin? Was it Noel or Kevin McStay? And, uh, no. one of the, was uh, that when Kevin McStay got injured then? Got it injured, could have been, yeah. Because yeah, he wasn't right yeah, for the yeah, campaign yeah, after that. Yeah, yeah. Um, again, I can remember, I can remember Jerry and Sean in the middle of the field and Ambrose O'Donovan again was mm. just rattled. He lost the plot early on and just his game was gone out the window. He just couldn't handle the boys, uh, matching up to him because Ambrose was big that time with the Kerry seniors. He went to following year, he captained mm. Kerry to the, you know, the mm. senior All-Ireland. So, um... Mm. Yeah, that's my biggest memory of of that is is the control we had at midfield and that kind of laid the platform for us. Um mm. and but again it's the, the coolness you know uh nothing phased us. We just took it on and and it was, it, from that. It was the boys in front of goal, wasn't it? it was the goals won that game like mm. uh, Brian Kilkelly played a huge part that day. He scored 2-1 and uh, Tommy Grogan got, got the other goal. Yeah. And if, you look, if you look at the, uh, at, at mo- uh, especially the latter games too, you know, people coming on had a, had an influence in the game, you know. Mm. Um, but that was a serious um, um, Kerry team too at the time, you know. Kerry, um, Kerry and Cork were really, really strong at underage mm. in particular times. Mm. And it was, you know, a toss of the coin of which of them teams may, may come out of, 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 of Munster. And for us, there's no doubt, any time you're up against a Kerry team, there's that kind of a thing in the back of your yeah. mind. You know yeah. well you're, you know well you're at, at the top, you have to be at the top of your game. We were lucky, we were lucky that day we got off to such a good start, there's no doubt about it. And we went into our doldrum for, for a period of time, but there's no doubt about it, we stuck at it and... And especially with Porik being sent off and whatever else, yeah. you know, we grinded that one out, and that certainly probably helped us later on in the campaign. But if 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 you go through the different games you've gone so far, a trend you'll notice is different guys mm. performed in different days. The day against Kerry, you had Tommy, like Tommy Grogan. One yeah. thing about Tommy, if he was near the goal, he was a deadly finisher, and probably that attributed. He was very good soccer player as well. Brian Kelly. Uh, wicked pace. I mean, and, a, le- got, and, and a left foot, and a left, left foot. foot. Yeah, uh, serious, serious pace, serious player. If he got inside you, he was gone. And so, um, yeah, it's and when things were put in front of us, different guys stood up at different days, and that was the beauty. And, of that, and that, that's the mark of a, of a great team. Is yeah. you're just to finish on that, lads. I'll give, I'll give you a joke. You, the, the, fa- the, the the most famous. Kerry's surname, of course, of, of the time is, is Clifford, right? Mm-hmm. But um, but the the player that Porrick had the altercation with was a gentleman called Clifford. Mm. But uh, but the the Western People Match Report uh, notes that he, he apologised afterwards 
for rolling round on the ground. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. I was saying to John, yeah. I, I, on another reminiscing podcast I do around uh, old football games, uh, we were looking at Kevin Moran getting sent off in 85 and Peter Reed straight afterwards going, no, I was never a red card, you know, and like, again, <laughs> same thing. So I like the time where people are doing, like just on adversity, so much adversity, like broken, sent off, so suspended for mm. the final, McStay yeah. injured, like mm. there's all these, like all the names I knew coming into this chat are like not featuring at the key moments. <laughs> yeah, yeah. This is a good sign for what you won the all learning like. Yeah, absolutely. Yeah. And that just, just showed the strength of the panel. Mm-hmm. Um, and you have to remember, I think, you know, six subs, I think, would be named before a game and you could only use three of them at the particular time. Isn't that right? Mm-hmm. Yeah, and in those yeah. days, they hardly used one if they didn't have to, which is mad altogether. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> so it's, it's uh, so, but it was very important that, you know, anyone getting injured or anyone that, up to sta- stretch yeah. in a day that you had somebody. I, I remember Martin Kearns coming on at a particular time, making a serious influence on a game, you know? Mm-hmm. So it's like, uh, sometimes it's not all about the team and especially in nowadays football, it's about the panel of the players is, that yeah. you have. And you had a huge management team. John who mentions that in, in the 2003 uh, booklet here, that like very not, not, not maybe for the modern times, but it was an eight man management team. Uh, mm. He says, that's what he said in 2003. I think we all know it's like, it was about 15 of them in there yeah. at the current time. The, with that in mind, Brogan's dismissal spurs Mayo to, uh, or the spur Mayo needed to be carried as the headline in the Western people. So to that, John, can you remember anything from the sideline when the red card go, when the player sent off, it wasn't a red card in those days, it was a point to the sideline, but can you remember what was said or how would O'Mahony have organised you there or did you sort uh, it out no, yourself? I, I, I'll be honest, I can't. I, 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 can't I, yeah. I, and it was yeah. early in the second half as well, so yeah, there was, it was, it was a long, way, a long to, way to home from there. Yeah, yeah, it's incredible. I couldn't believe that when I read the scoreline and read the story of the game. Like yeah, I think if it was probably, if, 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 if because Porrick was playing forward as well, yeah. okay. we had our midfield Strength in our midfield um, that helped probably to, to maybe to, yeah. to lose a guy forward yeah. was a lot better than losing maybe yeah. a midfielder or li- losing somebody maybe back in, in defence that you may, well, even though we had cover in defence and we had cover in most parts of the field. But maybe that was the reason it was easier maybe to defend because of that, you know, and maybe the uh, Kerry didn't make hay when with with their extra man at the time yeah. you know <clears throat> I think as well uh, what I mentioned earlier on about the two boys Jerry Jerry Garrity mm. and Sean Maher the dominance they had in the middle of the park that day seriously uh, it's you know uh, I re for a pod that we haven't actually put out yet myself and a few lads Billy Joe as well re-watched the 89 final John we were looking back yeah. at it and one thing I noticed is how good Maher was like like this is someone like I was eight. I don't remember the details of the game, but watching it back, he was some block of a man no, and right. very serious. hard to move. Oh, like yeah. he didn't right. <laughs> Sam man didn't know his own strength. He, yeah. he had serious power and serious engine. And you know, when when we needed someone to do it, who who turned up and scored the goal for us when, when Derry got the goal in the replay. He, he nearly busted that. He did, yeah. <laughs> yeah. And, yeah. And the funny thing about it and you meant you you asked there earlier on about what was the call from the sideline when Parry Brogan was sent off. I remember one call that was told to Sean Maher. He it? was warned always to stay between the two the two oh, parties. Yeah. Yeah. He was told not, not to, to go, go forward, forward yeah. or not to come back, stay stay in the middle. Yeah. And what does he do when he <laughs> in Irvinstown? <laughs> He goes and he scores a goal. So <laughs> yeah, he's, he was he was like it was such a, his great skills as well. Like I oh, mean, yeah. for a player that got described as like uh, as I described there as a block of man, there's so much to him as a footballer. But but, but it shows the point, doesn't it? That about how different people st- stepping up because because yeah. he hadn't mm. been like he, he had been, if you yeah. like, in 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 the shadows of like doing yeah. lots of really important work. But yeah. then at the moment he was yeah, he yeah. was the man that that. Yeah. That made but the a difference. lot of the work that Sean did, you know wouldn't be seen as well like yeah. you know he did a lot of defensive work and he did a lot of tackling that was that was but he, really but he, but he also allowed Jer Garish to, to shine didn't he Let, let's talk with Jer for a minute yeah let's yeah. just jump because you know, yeah like John can I jump in on this lads tell me more about him so I've read uh, like first first interaction with me understanding the importance of Jer Garrity was Keith Duggan's book right so like and I'd say a lot of people in my generation kind of was to learn about the great mayors of the pla- pa- players of the past um I don't think there's anyone that left such a feeling in my gut from reading Keith and reading lots and listening to Sean Rice, mm. like the, as much regret from a senior level of missing out. What kind of player was he? What do we, what do we not get to see at a senior level? And what did we get to see with it, the 83 team? Um, my memories of Jerry, 
basically hit everything. Fantastic fielder of a ball, could get up serious height from a standing position off the ground. Uh, brilliant passer of the ball and a fantastic score. score. Mm. Can take a score. Um, he was so cool. You know, it, <laughs> I always used to say about Jerry, you could put an ice cube on his forehead and you could come back an hour later and it'd be, the ice cube was still there, wouldn't melt. Mm. He was just so calm, easy going, nothing phased him. Uh, it was a great shame. I remember I remember when he when he immigrated, when he went to the States at the time and, you know, work was hard to get that time here. Mm. But uh, then when Jack O'Shea was in his prime, he used to go for an odd game over to Chicago when he, time when, when he had the great years with Kerry. And he used to meet up with Jerry and Jerry used to clean him. Mm. And Jack o always used to say, what, what was this man doing over in Chicago that he wasn't playing back home in, in Ireland, you know. But it was just unfortunate the way things happened at the time and Jerry had to decide he had to go and, you know, he he, he met his life over in Chicago and it was Mayo's last. Th- th- those were the times. Like those they were, were the, the times, times when yeah. 80, 90,000 pe- people were immigrating every year mm. and certainly in, in Mayo, I mean, it was mm. it was hit so hard that year. I mean, to most people, I, I immigrated as well and mm. loads of people did. Yeah. Um, well, I I was privileged enough to see him uh, mm. play both at under twenty one and at senior. Mm. And what really struck me about him was that how effortless he made it look. It yeah, was almost yeah. as if time stood still mm. around him when he had the ball. Mm. He, he had such graceful silken movements, mm. and he never. Yeah, as you said, he never seemed to be bothered. You no. know, but no. he he was he he, he was no. coolness personified. But he he was he he was a Rolls Royce player. Mm. But he, all he, all players, no matter what code they're in, be it Gaelic, soccer, rugby, those players that you say he always seems to have time on the ball. Mm. Yeah, they're they're the gifted they're the gifted guys, you know. And Jerry was one of them, definitely. There's no doubt he was he, he was a special player, and probably more so to us as well because <clears throat> we knew the influence that he had on our teams and on the teams that he played with was come, coming through. So. It, it was a huge disappointment, actually, for a lot of the players on the team to see him go. And and I think a lot of effort was made to um, hang on to him and whatever else. But um, uh, when he when he when he headed off, unfortunately, he set up a new life out there. And uh, I was out there, actually. Yeah, you're telling yeah, me. This, yeah, I, I, I was I was out there a couple of years ago. Um, my son was playing out um, and he actually played with his son midfield. Oh, um, brilliant. From, oh. for McBride's. <laughs> And, Jeez, uh, I pay I pay for <laughs> streaming for that one. <laughs> I pay a tenner yeah, for that. It's, it's good. We've we've um, we've uh, Big Tom Byrne was out there. Big Tom was out there for years. Yeah. And um, myself and Big Tom and 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 our two good wives, we headed off out anyway to the All Americans was on at the time. So we met up with Jerry Garrity uh, out there, and like the like the regard that he's been held with out in 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 in, in Chicago and in America in general, like you know. Um, He's 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 got every role of honor out there as far in the as far as the GA is concerned, and I think he'd be regarded as probably one of the best players ever to have played over in in, yeah. in the states, you know. So he was uh, special, there's no doubt about it, and he, he was sadly missed. Now look, I suppose you could there's a John Welch left. Uh, yeah. I know uh, if, uh, another fellow called Eugene Griffin actually. I That's don't know right. if you remember Eugene Griffin from um, Davids. Davids. <coughs> Eugene was an exceptional player mm. as well. We lost him as well, and Porrick Duffy. You could look at yeah. you. I, I and I suppose every county could say the similar things as well in them mm. times as well. It's just unfortunate we had to lose and, so and so natural. And, you know? and the thing is, you only have one life, you know. So you know, yeah. we've lost since we lost Pierce Hanley, Oshin mm. Mullen, of course, is is, is now yeah. playing his trade down under as well. It's yeah. just the way it goes. I thought it was really interesting <coughs> in the booklet, though. Uh, the twentieth anniversary one that John O'Mahony obviously references being on the phone repeatedly, and that's that that's mm. an anecdote that's that Keith Duggan recounted in 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 the House mm. of Pain. But also Ger, I think, mentions as well that, that that it's his regret as well, you know. But look at you have only one life; you have to live uh, the best uh, way. Uh, you, I, you I think, think John O was on to him and several times later, even you know, mm. at senior level when John took over at the senior level, yeah, was trying to get him back to at various different stages as well. But he just did, you know, set up life there and he kids and. 
mm. got married and so on. So, Just you know. circle back to that uh, 85 yeah. reference I meant in the football. Like Kevin Moran, I heard a long interview with him just talking about coming back and playing for Dublin, you know, and obviously mm. extremely different circumstances there. But like at the same time, there's, there's emigration for sporting reasons. And I just wonder, lads, like not to play the poor mouth, but I know you said other counties, but you're talking about other counties in the Western Seaboard, other counties where you don't have mm. those advantages of, big employers in the towns and, and stuff like that at that time. Like, and mm. it, economy still defines an amateur sport, doesn't it? Oh, absolutely. Yeah. 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 It's just, yeah. Look at, at the time we, we look at, we let you say, you know, you can't let this, you can't let guys like Jerry Garrity go out of, mm. you know, but sometimes it may be for personal reasons, you know. It's important. We've yeah. said this yeah. about Oshing Mullen. It's <coughs> like, we yes. wish him well and we all root for him. And, and like, yeah. as much as we want to win all, the All-Ireland, Oshing mm. Mullen's life is more important than Mayo winning an All-Ireland. That's yeah. the whole essence of what we're doing. That's just yeah. one example, Jerry Garrity, the other one. Yes. At the same time, it's, it's nearly celebrating their brilliance that we, that we regret there. Yes, <laughs> you know what I mean? It's our way of yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, yeah, absolutely. Yeah. On to Derry. On to Derry. On to, we're back to Carrick and Shannon, All-Ireland Final. Ennis, I think, was still like a summer's day, wasn't it? It was, it was, it was. It was a hot yeah. day. Whereas, te, what was it? Uh, um, 16th of October in Carrick and Shannon was like mm. a rough day in February. You know? I, <laughs> yes. I will never forget <laughs> yeah. that national yeah. anthem. I don't know if you can remember, John. A shower of hailstones came. Yeah. And I, for the first five minutes when the game started, I could barely feel my hands. It was so cold. But um, yeah, no, it was totally two different seasons from the semi final to the to the final. But uh, and and that was old Carrick as well. That was long, long before the stand that's right. was there as well. Mm-hmm. Yeah. So there was there wasn't that no. much shelter in it. No, no. Lads, you had that game won. That game was in the bag. What happened? <laughs> Eddie, you were back there. John, you weren't too far away. Right, I, don't right, know. Right, actually, remi- I think it, you were all back yeah, there. Yeah, you're all there. It, it, it reminded me, actually, I rem- reminisce back. It reminded me of a game in, in the Hogan Cup final. It's Car- 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 Carmelite Moat in 1981. We were two points up and the game was over. We were next to time. And unfortunately, we gave away a penalty in the last, the game was over. It was the last kick of the game. Ugh. Fortunately, oh. unfortunately, we were we were two points. Oh yeah, uh, the most dangerous lead. Yes, yeah. we're two points ahead. So thankfully, that's the only the the big thing is that when the goal went in, it we didn't lose by a point. We actually had the opportunity yeah. to to play Derry again. That was a huge. That meant naturally everything because if if we were only two points up, we, we were again mm. lost another game. By hard luck, or but, but it was such a shock, wasn't it? And uh, the, yeah, one thing that sticks in my mind from then was poor old Jimmy Duffy. The Lord be good to him, um, uh, Porrick's dad. And it was like it was like somebody had slapped him in the face. Like he just his mouth just dropped. Yeah. And and I think we were all we were all feeling oh, yeah. feeling the same because uh-huh. I think everyone thought this is it. We've yeah. done it. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. yeah there was uh, there was silence. But you must have had the the, the um, you you uh, had your speech half written at that stage. <laughs> I, I, I blame the cornerback. <laughs> <laughs> well. All I'll say is um, someone who wasn't here was at. And we I'll get to the speech was, again because this is relevant for the replay, right? <laughs> yeah. I was on the other side of the goal. Oh yeah. So, uh, um, but I remember when when Damien Barton took the free, and when I looked across and I saw the flight of the ball coming in, it was one of those shots. Is it going up? Is it going over? Is it going under? It just and how it got in, I. Well, it, it, it was <laughs> yeah. It was see, like yeah, I, I remember it well, and you he just couldn't have hit the ball mm. any. You know, it was perfect. Yeah, it yeah. went into the top left hand corner mm. of the goal, and you know, in fairness, we had everyone back mm. on the line. So it was like that, Michael Meehan's goal yeah. in that years it ago. Was, yeah, it top was, corner. Yeah. Well, what does it feel like? Because I mean, I mean, we've all been at all Ireland finals that have been drawn, and there's always mm. a real air of uh, it's it's an anti-climax isn't it because you, it you is, expect yeah. some kind of resolution whether it's going to be good or bad what's it like to troop back into dressing room and you have to go again because presumably you thought well it is it's all over mm. T- mm. today you know yeah. well from having me having the experience of losing a game in the last minute it, it certainly <clears throat> it, it was a relief that we had another chance at it but certainly it felt it felt probably like you lost the game uh, to a degree, because we had we had it in the grasp, and it was taken from us in the in in in, in the last kick of the game as well, you know. So, but that would be our you know. But look at 
yeah, we, like, we, we circled the wagons and, you know, for, for Edwardstown. And I, I don't think it really affected us mentally. No. And no. Like John was saying there, the year before I had lost to college as final by a point, And I had lost the same year I had lost a kind of minor final by a point. And when that goal went in, we were still there. And that was a relief to me yeah. as well. And It's uh, funny, David Walsh, the great journalist who is world famous now for his uh, cycling. He was the man at the game that day for, oh, the, yeah. mm. for the Irish press. And he finished by saying, Mayor will be worried by their inability uh, to win a game that they dominated for long periods, uh, Derry will be relieved. So, like it, it, it is, it is the natural inkling of all the neutrals to go. Oh, Mayo will mm. will be. Will, do they have it in them to win it, etc., yeah. etc. But, but, but of course, we had an ace up our sleeve because Parry Brogan was suspended for that game, That's yeah. it. and he was back for the next one. Yeah. Though Kevin McStay was still out, even though he he did come on yeah. as a, and as a sub, but obviously he had a few weeks more as well to That's to right. to recuperate. So we we were arguably going into Irvinstown a stronger proposition than we went into Carrick and Shannon. Lads, is this yeah. fact true? I, I saw David Walsh uh, estimates the crowd in Carrick around two and a half thousand and I've seen the f- crowd estimated about four and a half in Irvingstown. Do you remember a bigger crowd for the replay? There was think? a huge crowd. There was. Big crowd, yeah. 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 Definitely. Yeah. yeah. Definitely. Obviously 75,000 people say they were there now but we leave yeah. that aside. <laughs> um, and I, if I see Jono again, like I was to ask him about this but how the game ended up in Irving, yeah, the re- curious, replay in yeah. Irvingstown. Um Derry County Board afterwards maintained that Carrick and Shannon was pretty much like a home advantage to us being a mm. Connacht team. And reportedly, Jono was supposed to have said, well, you know, where do you want to play it? And next thing, Irvinstown came up and we said, OK, we'd, if you play it in their backyard, mm. let's do it. And um, my, uh, I know my memory, t- looking back and it was... I, and I know the rest of the guys had no fear the fact that it was going to be up in the six counties or in Ulster, you know, mm. being a home venue for Derry or whatever. I, I think but, it uh, spurred on the supporters because there was a there was a huge air of novelty about it. You mm, know, and as mm, I say, like we, we got mm, a bus from Claremont's bus was packed. Yeah. And there were buses going from everywhere. Because I remember mm. when we on the way back down, we came like Sligo like the Park. Holy Family, we came home by a different route. Mm. We we came back to Sligo because it yeah. wasn't wasn't the first stop was the Sligo, the Sligo Park, 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 Park Hotel. Yeah. And that was rammed. Like yeah. that was absolutely right. that was that was nearly <clears throat> like Irvin's Town all over again. Yeah. 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 yeah that's Bef- where, yeah. Just before we get to the final, what was Christy O'Hare like? Because like he's such a huge presence in the club that I'm from here in Ballinrobe and a huge presence in this town. He's talked yeah. about a lot. What what was he like? Yeah, Christy, he I think Christy's greatest gift was on the sideline. Very measured. Mm. He'd stand back sometimes when the game would get heated or whatever, and maybe some of the sideline would get drawn into it and get involved. Christy would just stand back and he'd observe everything. Great, he had a great knowledge of the game, mm. uh, very steady influence, and he he had great experience because mm. he had been involved in other uh, teams, Mayo yeah. Andres teams, yeah. and that before that, and then he went on with John as well in the the eighty nine senior uh, yeah. setup, wasn't he? Mm. So um, yeah, very cool, calm and collected. Yeah, yeah, um, uh, I suppose. Um, the way I remember um, him is like Christy again, as you say, he was very calm. There's no doubt about it. And um, uh, he didn't say an awful lot, you know, when, in in dressing rooms and things like that. But when he did start to say something, you yeah, you, you listened. yeah, you listen to him, you know. And and sometimes, you know, that that's good in a person, you know, especially when you're a setup, you know, you appreciate them coming out with their, you know. Um, but certainly, you know, he he was the right man for for Jano at the time as well because um, certainly from what I know of of all the all the Jano and the backroom team they got on very well mm. together and they um, and they gelled well together as well so there was a good you yeah. know relationship right across the board between it, really everyone in the band naturally it's, it's not rosy all the time but. Um, uh, certainly, Christy had um, a large input in 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 our setup. Yeah, yeah. Right off to Irvingstown. Off to St. Malicious Park, Irvingstown. Thirtieth mm. of October, so Halloween. Um, 
very different game from the drawing game because Derry obviously had a man sent off in the drawing game and they were clinging on and, and the, the the direct 14 yard free that we spoke about by Damien Barton earned them the second out. Of course, Damien Barton scores again the second day, this time from the penalty spot. But that seemed to put Derry in the driving seat. That puts them three points up. Um and it really looked like they were they were um they were on their way then. But I but I, I the memory I have it then was my my older brother Louis who who brought me to the to the first game. He started laughing at that stage, you know, which really sort of put, put me <laughs> I, I don't know was he was he was he losing his right, but he said no, he said he said, We'll see now what what you know what, what's going to happen. And he was really confident. And you never look back. And I'll never forget Sean Maher's goal. Like he it was such a bullet of a shot. It was rising as it hit the net. And that was it. It was just, you know, from then on, it was it was all it was all Mayo, you know. And I know that the Irish press have the have the um the the headline there. And they they summed up the match in their headline it was a late Mayo sport decisive mm. because you just came yeah. Like mm. a train at the end, and just swept them away. Mm. Well, as I spoke earlier on, like you know, uh, different fellas at crucial times stood up, you know, and Sean was yeah. one of them on the day. Uh, I don't know if Sean scored a goal again after that for a while, uh, <laughs> but he wouldn't be renowned for for his striking ability. Uh, Speaking getting goals. of that, Peter yeah. Ford was running up the fields. What's going That's on right. there, Eddie? He, yeah. he scored as well. Yeah. Uh, he did score a point there. He calls it a fluky point, and every no. other journalist calls it calls it one of these great scores. Like great that, score. That score. Yeah, I would compare that score to the famous point that Kieran McDonald scored really? under the Hogan stand. Wow! It was on the left side, pretty much down around the same side, and. Peter, it was, I think it was on his left boot. It, it, if if any score was going to Sean's goal was the start, but that one. And then when Martin came in, Martin Cairns, yeah. he scored a fabulous, fabulous point, point out in the left corner. Yeah. Serious. There you, you go know, again. Serious influence. Wider you, panel yeah. players coming in. Yeah. Yeah. yeah, yeah, yeah. That's amazing. Um, yeah. So these were all these little bursts that just kept up driving nails in in. Into the Derry coffin, as they say. And then we had a dramatic finale because Derry peppered you at the end. There were mm. several assaults on the goal. And, uh, and Eddie, you didn't see out the game. I mentioned I, Kevin Moran earlier. Yeah, Honestly, was, it, it was, I, it was just like, like it, it, serendipity it, that I was like checking that, out know, that game last week. They were building up for <laughs> The it. parallels are quite incredible. Yeah, you, you, you know that line from, from the life of Brian, like, he, he's not the Messiah, he's a naughty boy. <laughs> <Very> naughty boy. <laughs> so it was just... Do. it. it, it it would be classified as two yellow cards nowadays. Sean Rice you know? thought it was a yeah, disgrace yeah. for the record, Eddie. He thought it was an absolute <laughs> disgrace. Hi, Sean. Hi, Sean. Um, yeah, so in the first half, um, Derry were attacking down the wing and uh, the guy I was marking, he had the ball and I was trying to dispossess him. And he, what I thought openly, swung back and hit me in the face and I was waiting for the, the free. So no free came and so I just, Tugged the jersey. So that was the first yellow card. So then we roll on to the last minute of the game. And my memory of it is there was a high ball coming in. There was at least three or four of us that kind of went up for the ball in a group. We all ended on the ground. The ball broke. I was lying on the ground. The ball broke. And who was coming in but Dermot McNichol. Ball came straight up into the basket, into his chest. And I turn around and I look inside and all that's inside is Gabriel in the goal. There's, there's no defender inside. And as McNichol is running by me, I'm just laying on the ground. I put my hand up and I hand tripped him. And he took one for the team. I took, I took, <laughs> <laughs> um, yeah. So when I look back on it, uh, the older I've got and the more seasoned I've gotten, whatever, would I do it again? Absolutely. Yeah. <laughs> too right, too right. Absolutely. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, Dermot McNichol, that time, he was, uh, yeah. I know for me in defence, he was the one guy I feared that could mm. turn the game on us. Um, I think at the time as well, was he one of the first player, early players to go to Australia? Yeah, I think so. Yeah. Uh, and he, he would have played three years underage in yeah. a lot of them teams, the, uh, the Derry teams. Yeah. I think he was minor that year as well, mm. wasn't he? I think he was, yeah, too. Yeah. Um, so th there was literally about 30 seconds left and, I went after the sideline and they tried to attempt another comeback again with the free, but we had the goal lined and thanks be to God this time. <laughs> <laughs> Maybe the fact I was gone off the pitch, no goal went in the second time, but yeah. um, 
Yeah. Like, and, and of course, there, there were very, they always say Ireland was a very unforgiving place at that time. And, and, and one aspect of it was in, in the GAA, you weren't, they were, you weren't allowed to get the cup because of that. Because, no. because mm. that was the days that if you got sent off in a year, you weren't eligible for an all-star. Mm. Mm. You know, like it was, right. it was a very punitive time, wasn't it? Uh, so, so, so Ger yeah. Garrity had to, <clears throat> so had to, had to do the honours. When I was on the sideline before I went up, uh, final whistle was blown. We were all celebrating, and all the selection team were nearby and whatever. And Confusion. the next thing I could hear, some voices saying, "Geez, I don't know if Eddie can go up and receive the cup." And I'll always remember Liam O'Neill for this. Liam O'Neill was senior manager, and he was there, and he came over. And Liam grabbed me by the shoulder and he dragged me over in front of the selection committee. He said, this is your captain. This is the man that's going up to receive the cup. Brilliant. So I go up the rostrum and the bowl Paddy Buggy is waiting up there. So I go up and when he gets a chance, he whispers into my ear. He said, I'm really sorry about this. He said, but I can't present the cup to you. You'll have to call up your vice captain. So I'm up in the rostrum and I look down and Jerry is standing down onto me. <laughs> and I say, yeah. Hi, Jerry, come up here. And he, what? What? He's, yeah. He hasn't a clue what's going on. And would you believe Jerry didn't, never realized, he never knew I was sent off. Because oh. in, in the last 30 seconds of Amazing, the game, yeah. Jerry were piling on the pressure oh, and it was just yeah. all hands yeah. to the wheel. Yeah. So he couldn't understand why I was calling him up. So eventually he comes up and he says, what, what do you want? I says, come here. I says, uh, you're going to have to receive the cup of the president. So Paddy makes this, says the few words and he hands the cup to Jerry and Jerry turns around and hands the cup to me. So I make the speech and uh, yeah, afterwards then uh, all hell broke loose. But just a funny little story I to finish off and then I'll tell you. Years later, I was at a Mayo match in Crow Park and I had a premium ticket mm. and at half time was in at the bear and who's in there but Paddy Buggy. No, I love it. So I walk up to Paddy and I put my hand out to him and I said, Paddy, long time no see. And he's looking at me. Jesus, he said, I'm awful sorry. He said, but I can't remember. He said, where did I meet you? He said, <laughs> I said, Paddy, do you remember Irvinstown, 1983? <laughs> oh my God, he said, is it you? <laughs> I said, it is, Paddy. He said, I am so sorry, he said, and you wouldn't believe, he says, how often I thought about you, he said. And he said, would you believe, he said, I never knew about that rule existing. And he said it was one of your own county board. Ah, stop. Of course <laughs> that, it was. That came, came up to me <laughs> and <laughs> told me the rule. Oh, oh, I said, this, this is getting more interesting. <laughs> yeah, right. na name, name names. <laughs> <laughs> so I said, yeah. uh, who was it, Paddy? Oh, he said, I can't remember. <laughs> and when I talked back, I said, it, it could only be one man yeah. that would know all the rules or whatever. I said, was he a white-haired man with glasses, black glasses? That's him, he said. I said, was it a man called Johnny Mulvey? Correct. <laughs> <laughs> Named. Lord, Lord, Lord rest Johnny. Yeah, but, yeah, yeah. Um, yeah, yeah and, and I, said, I said to Paddy, I said, Paddy, in your playing career with Kilkenny, did you ever get sent off? He said, I did once. He said, we were playing Dublin in a National Hurling League match. And he said, I was getting roasted by this guy. He said, but he said, once too often he came in past me, but he said the next time he, I had to stop him. He said, and he said I got sent off. So he said, I know, I know the feeling. He said, I know where you're coming from. Just before we completely bookended, have you come across any of the Derry players since? We have three of them won an All Ireland title in 1993: uh, Scullion, German McNichol, McNichol, mm. and Barton. And Barton yeah. yeah, to three, to three lads, which is incredible. Ten years on, because I, you're talking mm. about under twenty one, so. It's a long career. They had great success at underage as well. I came across an article online about Derry's evolution through the early 80s at underage. Obviously, that's that minor team that you mm. lost to. Um, I, you have great respect for them, I'd say. Oh, yeah, the Der yeah. Derry were very strong in them, them years, there's no doubt, at underage mm. level. I, I'd have come across Mike Nickel and Martin at a later stage as well, playing senior football. Mm. Um, but 
look, they were, v- especially the forward line, they, they mm. had a serious forward line, very formid- formidable. And um, uh, you, you, there's very few people you go out and try and mark. Mike Nickel was one of the danger guys that you'd, you'd, you'd be, you know, you'd have to be on your game to, to keep yeah. up with them. But when you, you know, look back at those Derry guys as well, a lot of them would have come from college football with Pat Smara. Absolutely, Mara yeah. And, and that, so. Yeah, yeah, and in tough times. I, like we, I, yeah. like yeah. We, when we were looking back at the 89 team, what Tyrone had to deal with in terms of the troubles and, and uh, just getting to training, you know, like yeah. and, and it's no different now. Glenn, obviously, as we record this, if I won a club all out. I just want to read Sean Rice because like, he's... he's the greatest writer I think this county has produced or one of the all time greats I'm a big friend of ours yes. here this time there was no bloomer uh, this is his head this is a start to his article on the victory and the replay the mists of error vanished over the hills of Fermanagh and Mayo positive unexaggerated honest swept to a historic victory the obstacle was immense having let slip having let the lead slip away uh, two weeks ago Mayo looked less likely to repeal uh, repeat their dominance of the previous game. Yet apart from a few minor blemishes, they confirmed their superiority at Irvingstown and extracted full retribution from that painful lapse in concentration. Like, that's just a start. If, if you can find that article, and we should put it up, we should take a screenshot and put it up because mm. it's, it's Sean at his very best and he's an inspiration to a lot of us in the mm. journalism uh, mm. community. But I think the best kind of... Journalism like that is, is, is that captures the moment, John. And like, I'm sure you read every single paper you could possibly get your hands on. The well, I did. I, I, I have most of yeah. them in the scrapbook there. Um, oh. Yeah. It, it, I think from, from a fan's point of view, it was fantastic because it, it was a, it, it was a hugely needed success, I think, because at that stage, you know, we'd, we'd, we'd had that hammering by Kerry in 81 in the All-Iron semi-final. And, and then getting getting obliterated at, in the Connacht final in, in 82. And we needed something mm-hmm. to raise the spirits. And I mean, with Liam O'Neill coming in, obviously the 83 Connacht final was, was a decent performance. You know, it looked like there was something happening. But I always, and I keep saying this, I, I, I always regard that victory as, as something that lit the spark. It just seemed, it, it, it gave us something to hold on to. And if you look at, at all the players that came through from there, yourself, John, among them, you know, 85, I think, was the first fruits of it. I remember that that was such a satisfying day in 85 because you saw a lot of that team. There was you, there was there was, there was was uh, Peter Ford, there was John Mahon, mm. there was uh, Noel Durkin in the forwards, Kevin McStay, obviously, as well, Pike Brogan. And you just thought this yeah. team was coming through. Mm. And and obviously, uh, bolted onto that then was the minor winning team of 85. And there you have the bulk yeah. of the 89 team. And I, I regard... Too. Everything that comes afterwards then can be traced back to that. So I think in large part, you know, what you guys achieved in 83 changed the narrative for Mayo. Mm. Or it certainly, it certainly can claim yeah. to, to have a big share of, of the origins of the current Mayo story. What, well, do you, what do you think of that? Yeah, <clears throat> when, when you look back at the 70s, we were really, we struggled to win Connacht Finals. You know, it was, it, it, it was, it's not because we just didn't have the continuity of players and and like we were lucky that particular team in in in, in at that particular time that quite a few of us went on to play senior in the following couple of years but like we had the Willie Joes with TJ Gannons with the Henry Gavins so we had the mix there of the of senior players to bring us along as well yeah. you know and and that was very important i think in, in sometimes in the 70s um, you didn't have that continuity, right? Yeah. You had breaks and gaps. We like the the seventy eight minor team. It pro- you know we probably didn't get the um, the amount of players out of that team that we should be getting out. Mm. So th- there was gaps happening there between uh, minor and under twenty one that wasn't. Uh, and and there's no doubt a bit of professionalism with Jano and with Liam O'Neill. Um, I'm not saying that any previous managers weren't professional, but in in our t- time they brought, you know, weight structure in place and 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 different things that we wouldn't do. like. Jono was before his time as he went on. He brought the psychological element into it. May not have suited everyone, mm. but if it only held five percent of 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 the team, it might have been enough to get you across the line. So, you know, so. 
it was a multitude of everything that brought that along. And um, I look at the 80, I look at the 86, 87 period. We, we lost two conic finals in, in 86 and 87, which, which was, which was key. It, it, the continuity got mm. broken for, 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 for a stage. And it took us another, it took us the 80, 80 and 89 to get back to where we should, should have been. So there was, there was and, that element of it, you know. And John O'Mahony was obviously key to that as well because he, he, he came in in 88. Yes. And uh, and, yeah. and then the, and the final was the year after. The other thing as well that we haven't mentioned, we won in 83, but we got to the final again in 84. Four. That's right. And we're unlucky on the day. We lost to Cork by three points. Mm. Um, but all that built up like for the guys well, the, that went on to... The nucleus is that yeah. Cork team in, 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 in 84... Um, played against played. us in eighty nine in the right. Ireland final. Yeah. So you know, so we were doing something right because we were keeping up there at the at, yeah. at, at a pretty high level, you know. Yeah. So um, and they were very formidable. Naturally, yeah. they went on to win two um, eighty nine and ninety. You know, yeah. lads uh, have loved it. They've had yeah. a great time just reminiscing. Is there any any final stories? Any like John? Like because we got Eddie's kind of full time whistle. What's your memory of the full time whistle? Do you? <laughs> well, uh, naturally, did you know he was sent off? First of all, I did. <laughs> right. I did. You're paying attention. <laughs> he was behind me. That's right. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> so there was a bit more attention to detail then at that stage when you were when you were a man down. But um, uh, naturally, elation. Um, but the one. The one thing that really stood out was the confusion. Yeah, you know, while Jerry Gary didn't, we, you could sense the confusion. Mm. Um, yeah, with Jerry going up, and you know, no one knew what was really going on. You know, I does, think Jerry does, doesn't matter. Does it take no, anything away? It does. No. It, add, it adds to the story. Yeah, it does, but it but, does, but yeah. I think there was such a big Mayo crowd there as well that it mm. kind of got. It, you know, it was lost yeah. in the flow because yeah. yeah. there was yeah. such yeah. an outpouring yeah. of emotion yeah. at that yeah. stage, yeah. wasn't it? Yeah, but we we would have been wondering what what's. Jer doing, you know, normally yeah, yeah, one yeah, person yeah. to be going up getting the, you know, but <laughs> yeah. it's, is is um, yeah, certainly I, like the occasion was, it was, it was brilliant. Like, you know, there's, there's no doubt about it. And I remember you coming back because we obviously got the bus back to Clare Morris and, mm. and there was a, there was a drink or two ahead that night. I Except think. for Kevin McStay who missed <laughs> yeah. it. They'd go off back to the That's army. Right. That's That's right. Like I keep thinking about that. That but, would kill yeah. me if but I was went, a fan. You went all over the county that night, I think, didn't you? Because you, yeah. I remember you came to Clare Morris, there were bonfires there, but you went off all over the place after we, that. Yeah. We did. I remember... Coming into You'd have had to go I, to the Neil anyway. I, we, yeah, we, 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 finished, we finished up in the Neil that night. We went to, I remember coming into Ballon Road, first oh, of all, yeah. and there was a gentleman with a loud hail around the car. Oh, I remember him. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Oh, uh, name is gone for me. Liam Horn will shoot me for forgetting that name. Uh, and he's gone. And oh, I remember that well. So he was waiting at the Mart for us and <laughs> we all got together he asks us out on the loud hailer. Now, this was, I'd say it was about half 12, one o'clock at night. He said, please, now, I would ask you when you're driving around the town, please do not blow your horns. <laughs> <laughs> so needless to say, there was there was, there was a good bit of noise made to go around Van Roo. But yeah, we went out to Kong, then to my home village and the, the famous cross that's in the streets. At one stage, I can remember being put up on top of that with the cup and <laughs> my fear was I knew that the base wasn't very stable underneath because of the trucks oh, going yeah. back to the, the, right. the <laughs> sand quarry but um, yeah and then we we finished up in Mellis and the Neil that night but we'd for the next couple of days we were, mm. I think we visited every corner of the county and yeah, because the team spread yeah. from Gabriel's up in Glen Moy to <laughs> you must have been every corner of yeah. the yeah. 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 yeah and, yeah. and uh, another memory is I know Lord West Dr. Mickey Loftus, mm. I remember he asked he asked us if we wouldn't put alcohol into the cup. Mm. And um, so we arrive in the Sligo Park Hotel for the meal. So everyone there is keeping guard of the cup and make the yes, the county board said to us, look at lads, don't try and keep it, mm. keep it safe. But when we were leaving, walking out the foyer of the hotel, and the next thing, someone shouts at me, Eddie, look out. And here comes this guy with two pints. And he tries, to, he tries to throw it in <laughs> to the cup. But we managed to just nice. get it up to the way in time. Yeah, yeah. Then were the days. Yeah. 
<laughs> That's brilliant, lads. Uh, well, you did the county proud, and and like I, I love that people still stop you and talk you talk to you about it. It's it's so important. I think that it's what intertwines all of us uh, in generations uh, throughout. Yeah, John. Yeah, and and I think you'll find, lads, as well that that um, for a lot of supporters, particularly people of our era, the, the people that were there, they might have been only kids there. Um, or, or people who are who are young adults as as I was at, at, at the time. I mean, it, it's still such a special memory, you know. Yeah. All all these years later, and I think yeah. you know, you know, you, you achieve something really special that year, mm-hmm. and and it's something that uh, that that a lot of us hold hold fairly dear. You're one it's, of it's, many 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 Mayo men and women who have all their medals in their pocket, and I think that gets forgotten sometimes when the when we lament our, our failures, we forget to celebrate our successes. John, absolute pleasure. Thank you. Eddie, yeah. absolute pleasure. Thank you. Thank you very much, yeah. Rob. Yeah. Thanks, 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 John. Thanks, John. Thank you. Right. We'll talk to you soon, folks.